Okay, I'll call the uh, meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order at 6.02 p.m. on the 9th of March. Um, minutes uh, for review and approval from February 23rd. Uh, Fred, you got anything? I got nothing. Move, we approve. And what about March 7th? You got anything? Fine with March 7th. Do you want to make a motion for both at the same time? Move to approve both. Second, all those in favor, Fred? Yes. Me, yes. All right, uh, vendor and payroll warrants. There were none this week. So this is for next week, Brian? Uh, these are ones that were from two weeks ago. Two that you had signed them two weeks ago. I signed them a week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, right. Okay. Yeah, the 28th of February. So Fred, I'm begging you that you didn't have any issues with them. I had no issues and you didn't have to beg. Okay, good, thank you. Um, any public comment that is, there's Joyce. Any public comment um, that is not on the agenda as listed? Hearing none, uh, I will catch Joyce up. Joyce, we took the liberty of doing vendor and payroll warrants, public comment and um, minutes. Uh, we didn't think you would mind. Uh, you were so efficient. I am so impressed. It's only six. Yeah, that, that's why I did what I did. Because yeah. all right, well, but I had my. I'm impressed. I had my aide de camp Fred helping me out. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's go to uh, discussion on COVID nineteen, Brian. Yes, let's do that. I'm going to share with you the agenda, which you don't care about. Um. Well, maybe you do care, but let me scroll down to COVID-19. So the Board of Health met on March 1st, and these were the recommendations that they had for the select board. Um, I will summarize them, and folks can read them on the screen if they want to, but um, essentially, they are uh, suggesting that masks be um, encouraged or recommended, but no longer required for indoor events and meetings. Um, and they um, also likewise um, are not suggesting that we require indoor socially, indoor social distancing or limits on capacity um, or any um, vaccination or negative test requirements for private events that used to be in place. Um, they strongly urge people to get uh, vaccinations and boosters for those who are eligible. Um, they, um, they would like to, they would recommend that for all town buildings that, um, con uh, so essentially law, um, attendance logs essentially for people who are attending events in, in um, in the event that con uh, contact tracing is required. Um, they also want us to keep in place the uh, indoor ventilation and air, purif air purifiers that we have um, we have um, installed um, air purification units at both the town hall and town offices. And we also have some standalone units that um, are also working in, in both buildings. So um, I had uh, prepared modifications to the different orders that the board had in place. Um, and we can go through those if you want, um, but it was essentially to uh, bring those in line with what the Board of Health recommended. Um, so, mm -hmm. I, I, any, yes. any questions or comments from Joyce or uh, Fred? Uh, my only question is, where does this leave uh, meetings of, well, our meetings and boards and commissions? Yeah, I, I guess um, along those lines, um, I don't know if it's worded that way right now, but I would still like to require that meetings be recorded, even if they're in person. Um, and if they're in person, we've got the, we've got the equipment right there to record it in the meeting room. Uh, so I, I would like to require a recording still. I think that's been really um, important. I, I guess I'd also like to require that we have 
um, an option for people to join remotely because that's not just a pandemic thing. We, that It makes it possible sometimes for me to be at a meeting if it's got a remote option and whereas it's impossible otherwise people are people are busy i i didn't get out of work until 25 minutes to six and it's snowing out there um so many days i teach till six and there's a meeting that starts at six um i could never make that if it was if there wasn't a remote option to join from my office um i know plenty of people who it just facilitates their participation in meetings and participation on boards, which are honestly primarily volunteers. So I'd like to see what we sign tonight be consistent with maintaining a remote option. I think we should do that past July 15th and just make it our town's policy. Are we, Brian, are we allowed to, um, what, what are the parameters around remote meetings from the state? Are there any? Um, they've been extended through July 15th, I believe. But I don't think we really know what's going to happen after that. Right. Um, I'm I'm personally with Joyce on that. I I, I want to. You know, I'm not I'm not convinced that that the remote access dramatically increases public participation and attendance, but it certainly does help those those of us who have lives. Uh, and everyone has a life, so forgive me. But you know, for those of us who who are required to be um, in in work mode uh, in, into evening hours to um, be able to to serve in multiple capacities and and, and still uh, and still do our jobs, and obviously volunteerism is not exactly um, expanding in terms of demand these days it's shrinking and so anything we can do to help help people get involved with with the town uh, we should be doing so I, I have no problem I mean obviously we're gonna have to monitor what we're allowed to do going forward but um, I, I, I think I think it's it, it's great to continue to have remote opportunity um, you know personally I have no problem with with the continuation of, of these meetings being being held remotely but I may be in the minority there. I'd, no, you would not. <laughs> At least not on this board, I don't think. No, I, I, I don't have a problem with live meetings, and certainly fully in favor of recording meetings and providing remote options. Um, and I think we, it, it may come down to state guidelines as to whether we are required to have. Uh, public meetings or in-person meetings at some point or can continue Zoom meetings or, you know, there could be some meetings where with presentations or the like where we might want to be in person anyway. Yeah. I, I think, though, I mean, the, the main thing I'm concerned with is that, I mean, I, I think we're, all, we're, we're probably going to be remote until they take that remote option out of our hands, right? Um, but there are boards that want to meet in person. And uh, I would like to sometimes be able to go to, say, I don't know, the planning board. And if the planning board doesn't have a remote option, I'm not going to make any of their meetings ever, and no matter how important their stuff is, because they're always scheduled for a time that I can only just barely make it if I'm running from class. Um, and so I want a remote option to be able to go to things like oh, the Frontier budget meeting the other day um there's just there's just all kinds of things that i can now do that i couldn't realistically do before so we have it within our power to make it the policy for our town right so that is our meetings will have remote options right so is it fair to say joyce that the policy would be that that um whether to meet in person as an option is up to individual committees or 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 continuing to remote mm -hmm. remeet strictly remote but uh if they decide if they choose to meet in person they need to have that remote option i think that's a reasonable thing yeah and brian the new equipment that we have in the conference room uh covers remote option yes yep it should be all set we got over the last hurdle of figuring out how to broadcast it live by ourselves. 
Um, so we can not only um, not only have an in-person or, or hybrid meeting and record it, we could also broadcast it live as well on channel 15. Oh, wow. Now, do we have that option? If, 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 if we as a board, just use us as the example, if we as a board continue to, re, to meet the three of us being remote, does that, and you being in the office, obviously, does that preclude us or does that mean that we can be live as well? How does that work? I think we could go live as well. <laughs> if there's one person in the room who right. can operate that system, then it can be live as well. But, somebody but there would have to be at least one person in the room. And not It wouldn't have to be a board member. It would have to be a person who knows how to operate that equipment. Everyone else can join by Zoom. Right. If I had the foresight, I probably could have set it up before, but for tonight, but hmm. I didn't. <laughs> and, and the challenge is I was going to say that it could be an FCAT employee, but if FCAT doesn't have keys to the office and if there's no one else in the office, it makes it impossible for that for the FCAT employee to be that person who's, who's operating the, the equipment. Yeah. Conference. Right. And yeah, I mean, there's really very little equipment to operate. Everything's once it, you get it set really up and about, running. It's really about just setting it up and get it running, which um, it might, might take five minutes the first time, but it, it's really not difficult at all. Right. Yeah. But, but my point is somebody has to be there to shut it off at the end of the meeting and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Brian, what are your plans for, I mean, it, far be it from me to say, I, I'm going to be remote, but our town administrator certainly is not going to be remote. I, you know, I want to give you that option as well. What are your plans? Um, I, I like to do select board meetings here. Um, it's based on my personal situation. It's a little quieter. <laughs> <laughs> well you're saying the kids are loud no sometimes and not your kids your kids aren't loud right they're not loud when there's a movie on in the other room right uh that electronic babysitter is a wonderful <laughs> yeah. uh okay so so is do i hear does can somebody make a motion that mm -hmm. i assume will embrace these measures that the Board of Health have outlined and in, and add to that a um, the commentary about or the, the policies yeah. around remote uh, man, mandatory remote option. I think it might be that when we look at the implementation, the documents that have been yep. uh, have all like the red lines and the red new words, we may make some slight adjustments to that. Um, because I think what the what the documents did well was ad addressed directly with the Board of Health mentioned. Um, the Board of Health doesn't really say whether we should have a remote option for everybody. Um, and so that might not be captured. So maybe as we read through these, we could uh, suggest places where the wording can be tweaked to um, kind of make that be the policy. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? We we can adopt the Board of Health uh, recommendations and just add additional language of our own at the end, as far as recording meetings and remote well, meetings. Well, I don't think we need to do, I mean, amending the order, establishing, um, yeah, I guess it, it depends on what exactly are we voting on. I mean, the Board of Health made their recommendations and it sounds like we we basically we've heard them, but then we have to go back and amend the various advisories we made. And I think that's where, um, like, there's one that's sort of uh, general about the face coverings. There's another one that's general about face coverings for town buildings. Uh, there's one that's um, COVID nineteen protocols for town buildings. Right, and we've got sort of the originals there and we've got the marked up ones. So I don't know if we say, all right, we accept what the Board of Health says, that's kind of meaningless when we go and look at the actual things that we've proclaimed and, and revise those. That's when the rubber hits the road. Does that make sense? 
I, I don't see why we just can't adapt the latest Board of Health advisories. Because that's vague and meaningless. And when you come to interpret it, it's going to be, well, what is our face covering advisory for town buildings? What is our COVID-19 protocols for town buildings? What is it, our... It, well, as, as the, I mean, I've got the, the face yeah. coverings are up on the screen now, and mm -hmm. then face coverings are encouraged. In yeah. other words, not required. Okay, yes. So yeah. I think, I feel like we should take these one at a time and just, and, and go through, through it with, I mean, those are the things that we have the power to do. We don't have the power to make advisories on health, but we can uh, take the Board of Health's advice and okay. make it so with the things we do have control over. So Brian, why don't you read them one by one and we can say, uh, we can hear a motion or we can make amendments as we go. There aren't too many of them, but let's, let's, let's make it as expeditious as possible, but be thorough at the same time. Yep, so there's only three of them. So let's do the first one, face, cover, uh, face covering advisory for town buildings. Um, this essentially replaces the word required with encouraged, um, and it deletes some of the words that, that took away those exceptions to the re requirements that were required, the medical, uh, the medical exceptions and, uh, town employees working in their own workspace. So it, it essentially says masks are required in town buildings. Wait, it says that masks are encouraged in town buildings. Uh, encouraged, encouraged. Yep. My bad. Um, I uh, would move that we adopt the new language on the face covering advisory for town buildings um, that's in our packets, which replaces required with encouraged and with, changes with the preamble. With regard to face coverings, yeah. With Second. regard to face coverings. All Second. those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Next. Okay. All right. Town building protocols, COVID-19. So... Um, there's some changes to the introductory language that were similar to the face covering one. Uh, number two, all persons are encouraged to practice safe social distancing by remaining six feet apart. That's no longer mandatory. Uh, number three, all persons are encouraged to wear a face covering at all times when inside a town building and is deleting the exceptions to the requirement. Um, number four, um, that used to say 50% capacity, but it's 100% capacity now. Um, I don't know why there's not a deletion there, but um, I don't know why a lot of these are in red, but a log of attendees shall be kept in the event. That one was already in place and it would stay in place. Number six, ventilation, air purification um, was also a requirement. So that would stay in place. Um, so here's where we might want to wordsmith it, where the board may want to wordsmith this a yeah. little bit. All town buildings are open for in-person public meetings subject to the restrictions listed in this order. Boards and committees are strongly encouraged to hold hybrid meetings, with both in-person and remote meeting participation options. So there we need boards and committees are, um, boards and committees that choose to meet in person must offer a remote access option, period. Yeah, I think that's uh, the simplest way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, are, are required. Yeah, they should be required instead of. Do we and, want and to I don't put think in we. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, do we want to put in provision, you know, unless technically unfeasible, like the equipment breaks down? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think if, if equipment, if, if technology is, 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 is not working, then I don't think it's in our best interest to say, okay, you can't hold the meeting. But right. I think that I think right. that I but if it's posted as having a remote option, I don't know if we would get in trouble with open meeting law by sort of not having a remote option at the last minute. Um, but it, it it's just Zoom, right? It's been working all along. We've not needed to say if technology breaks yeah. down in our in our policy so i think i, I don't think we need well, to well, I'm saying we're going to be we're going to be that. relying on the town offices hardware at this point should there be a problem i'm not worried about zoom as much as the hardware town offices if there's a glitch of some sort 
that, you know, as sometimes people's individual cameras or microphones flake out. I, I, I guess I would equate it to if, if the town decided to hold a meeting in a snowstorm because, because the, the, the committee didn't feel, committee members slash chair, whoever, didn't feel like it was bad enough, but some people didn't feel comfortable getting out in the snow. Well, that's, I mean, that I, the similarities, the parallels are there. It, you know, if, 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 if for whatever reason you can't make it because of X, for, because of things outside of the committee's control, technology not working being one of them, then I think it's an unwritten thing that you just keep you keep moving forward. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to put that clause in. I think okay, keep it simple. I think the way Jonathan stated it was probably as simple and direct as it can be stated. So you got that, Brian? Yeah, boards and committees that choose to meet in person shall offer a remote participation option. Yep. And um, uh, and recording, I think, is the other thing. Yeah, and and I I actually and this is wordsmithing, and I really don't want to wordsmith in a meeting, but I actually don't like the word shall. I think it. I think some people will read that as somewhat nebulous. I think are required or must yeah. is a lot more concrete. I I like are required. Yeah. I think it's unambiguous when you say required. Right, where shall is, uh, you know. Yeah, the people with law degrees know what shall means, but the people who don't have law degrees, which I'm guessing is a majority of our participants in meetings, don't necessarily know what shall means. I, I just, yeah, I think we should avoid ambiguity. I mean, if you mm -hmm. recall 20 years ago, the definition of the word if was a major issue. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. And then there's yeah. no other change. Right. No when it changes. says, just a quick question, when it says town buildings are available for in-person and public and private, public and private events subject to restrictions listed in this order, there aren't many restrictions, but that's referring to things like the air purification, the log of attendance, right? That's, yeah. all, that's all it's really referring to now is much smaller list of restrictions, but it yeah. still has those very modest restrictions. Okay. Well, I would move that we uh, accept the amended uh, order establishing revised COVID-19 protocols for town buildings. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. <coughs> Next. Okay. And this is the um, revised directive on town employees returning to work near the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hopefully we also said near the end, like last summer. And yeah, let's hope we don't have to say it again someday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, not too many changes here. It, it was to reflect that encouraging social distance instead of requiring it and encouraging face coverings instead of requiring that still the isolation guide uh isolation and um um exposure guidelines would stay the same that dph okay. has uh with the frequent hand washing i would say employees should practice not getting back to our shall problem I'd like it to be our employees do practice frequent hand washing, but that's not really a. Yeah, we can't do that. It's uh, not a directive. Right. It's a pat on the back. I would like that to be a statement of fact. <laughs> and, and there's also the interpretation of what is frequent. Every more 30 what's seconds. Clean. I, it's, this part is so subjective. I mean, when I was in the office today, I, I felt ridiculous and you know brian put on his mask when we were a solid 10 feet away from each other yeah that was the policy of the building at that time but i, I don't want people to feel like they need to do that if they are feeling safe in the future 
Yeah. I think that that I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, I'm ambivalent about changing employees shall to employees should. I, I think either one is is fine. I don't think it's gonna make somebody wash their hands if they don't want to, but I feel like that's probably not a problem. It's, that's just my guess. Right. It's petty wordsmithing. Yeah. Right. Well, we got to count on somebody for petty wordsmithing, Fred. That's why I'm up, here. Stand up and take the job. Can, can I make a suggestion that we just adopt this as is? I'll second that. All those in favor? Uh, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Brian, hello. Hello. <laughs> I was reading the, uh, I was distracted by the uh, bulletin board there, and I don't know that we ever changed the advisory from <laughs> masks are masks are recommended to mandatory in the town building. So see what happens. Oh, okay. When we right, check Amy, that one off the list. That, Amy. Come on. That's when, your, we allow your lap meeting, now. when we allow meetings in the town offices, you get distraction. Uh, that's what happens. Yeah. I'm used to kids screaming. I'm not used to a bulletin board flashing in my peripheral. Yeah. All right. So that's it, we, that's it for those. Is that it for COVID, Brian? Yeah. I okay. hope so. More ways than one. There's nothing else in the meeting materials on it. So I assume. Or the it. night. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next agenda item. And you've got to pull up the agenda for me, Brian. I mean, I guess I could do it myself. Well, I just closed it. No, I got it. It's all right. All right. I, <laughs> Old business. Uh, FERCOG contract, uh, development of a housing production plan. Yep, so this is me. Um, Peggy Sloan drafted this final um, contract for us to sign for the production of the Waitley housing production plan. Um, it, I think that it covers the production quite well. It gives a very well laid out um, uh, timeline as well as deliverables and it fits within our budget. Yeah, um, I have a question. I How are we going to get Fred Orlowski to sign it? <laughs> I, I was going to comment on that. I have reached out to Peggy and she will provide us with a corrected contract. Um, so once we have a corrected contract, I am requesting that the board, uh, I re I'm requesting that the board uh, give us approval to sign and continue with the contract pending correction of Fred Orlowski's name to Jonathan's. Is this all three of us, uh, Hannah, or just me? It's just you, Jonathan. It's all on you, John. You have you have a little bit of time. You have flexibility in that schedule. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, we're hoping to start work on this sooner rather than later. Um, okay, so well, that, we're gonna we're gonna cover that later on. So that that's fine. Okay. Okay. Super. Okay, well, I would uh, move that we we approve this particular uh, application. Um, for the Whitley Housing Production Plan. As corrected. As corrected, yes. Second. Uh, all those in favor? They have to roll call us. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Uh, and I'm not even in the town offices. Um, Joyce. Hi. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. All right, uh, what would be next? How about uh, One Stop for Growth grant program? This is also me. So um, these are the, I can share my screen if you'd like, I can show you the expressions of interest. Um, oh, I need to be made a co-host in order to do that. Um, you've seen these, I believe you've seen these drafts of the One Stop for Growth expressions of interest. They're for the water main loop closure on Egypt Road and for the exit 35 um, economic development plan. So here is the document. Um, this is the first one for exit 35. I'm hoping to apply for capacity building and site preparation. One stop for growth will get back to us and tell us what we're eligible for. That should be ballpark uh, $50,000 for an application. Um, the second project, is for Egypt Road. This is closing the water main loop and paving Egypt Road. 
Um, this project will be between 500,000 and a million dollars. Um, and no match is required for us for this program. I can keep this. Yeah. I move we uh, go forward with uh, these applications or we approve Hannah going forward with the application because she's the one who actually has to do the work. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Fred? I, I see no reason why we wouldn't. If the Egypt Road grant was given, would we have a hearing first to hear from the people on Egypt Road that whether they want their street paved. Yeah, community engagement is a big part of this grant application program. Um, so I think that we would have ample opportunity for community engagement. Okay. And then we would, have, second. we would have to actually have to hope that people show up for the hearing. <laughs> I'm well, give them a remote option and then maybe they right. will. I don't know. We had a remote option tonight for the uh, CPC hearing and uh, the words yeah. that come to mind are goose and egg. I don't know. Okay. Well, there's a motion that's been seconded. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Um, all those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Me? Yes. All right. Um, request from the Whitley Water Department for CLR, CLFRF monies. Yes. So at the last meeting, we had, I guess, an outline of a request from the uh, the water department for um, a request to spend COFRF money. That's our COVID monies. Now they're plowing outside the town offices. So now I'm distracted again. Um, <laughs> the so, money is piling up outside the town offices and that's <laughs> distracting you? How? <laughs> um, so there's a letter from the water commissioners to the select board. Um, and I'll, I'll summarize it. They're seeking uh, $70,000 of COVID money for a uh, 100 kW propane fire generator for the pump house. And a second request is, it says between nine and $10,000 for a storage shed um, to be located outside the main pump house. Um, because what's happened as they've as they were required to install more uh, fil the filtration system. They ended up had, having to install another filtrate, uh, uh, three more filtration tanks. And then they had to install the booster pumps because they, they weren't able to push enough water through the filters. Um, I think you guys all remember that. That was a year or two ago. Um, uh, they just have issues with space right now inside the existing building. Um, so, Originally, we had uh, the board had created the CLFRF committee, um, and Fred is the representative to that committee. And as we talked about at the previous meeting, that I think I said that the progress was slow, and I think Fred maybe said it was very slow, um, something along those lines. And I would agree with that. Um, there are a number of projects um, that were submitted as you know as competing projects. Um, I, despite, um, a lot of effort, we still don't have a meeting scheduled for, um, this month to talk about it. And even then I am not sure if the committee's very focused on moving quickly. Um, one way to get them to move quickly might be for the board to ask for recommendations by date certain. I don't know what you think about that, Fred. Um, cause I mean, we have the committee has a list of, of town projects that were submitted. We also have a list of the capital projects submitted to the capital improvement planning committee. And then we also have this request from the water department. Um, and these are all sort of projects that could compete for this funding. It's 40, 480,000, some 450, 480. I thought it was 450 the, something, but that's yeah, I'm remembering too. Yeah. Um, maybe it was 458 or something like that. Um, I have the spreadsheet here actually, uh, but it's not up. Anyways, um, so we have all these competing projects uh, for, at the end of the day, the 
450,000 is not a lot of money um, for, for the, you know, for the town's needs. Um, the town typically probably spends that one year of capital projects. It probably spends close to that. Um, and the other, another thing that's happened is, and this is probably too technical and not worth getting into, but uh, treasury changed the rules essentially as to what the eligible activities were for the funds. Um, there were, I don't know if you remember, there were five or six different categories as to how those funds could be spent. One of those categories was, was lost revenue. And there was a, a formula for the town to calculate how much, how much revenue it lost on hypothetical scenarios. Well, that rule has changed and it pretty much said, um, we're going to assume that, that all municipalities have lost up to $10 million in revenue. So you can spend up to $10 million, um, of CLFRF funds essentially for any general government operation purpose. Mm. So um, we don't really have a restriction on what we can spend the money on. It's just our first 10 million, right? Yeah, so the next 10 million, <laughs> the next 10 we'll million. have to be careful with, but. Right, yeah. Um, so that pretty much opens up the funds to real, really mm. any lawful, pur lawful purpose of the town government. But we're not um, there. But we're not there yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. I. I guess I'm. I guess I'm. Maybe suggesting that we try to ask, and I want to hear Fred. Fred's opinion on this: whether we ask them for the committee for some type of deadline, or we just say the board's going to move ahead sooner with the capital projects that were submitted to make decisions. Um, and the committee can talk about longer term stuff. I'm not really sure which way to approach it. I, given what I've seen from in the committee, I would say we can go ahead with considering the capital projects we've got submitted. There was no general consensus on a single big project that we should spend the money on. Uh, there was, you know, while there were lots of big projects, I don't think there was any one that everyone said, yeah, you know, let's put it all into that. Um, I don't know. I, I would like to uh, send the $70,000 proposal back to that committee because that's, you know, not quite 20% of the total mm. budget for one project, which ultimately, as important as it is, does not affect the entire town. Yeah, but how many of the projects are going to affect the entire town? I, I mean, wasn't wasn't closing the water loop on the list as well? That wouldn't affect the entire town. Yeah, and it's a very important project. So I, I guess I, I just wonder whether we need to see the sort of the, the, the point system that uh, some type of a point system or a scale that demonstrates where the committee felt a, a proposal or an option was had, had solid merit and, and, and where it may have been lacking, you know, across the town or, or, or return on investment or whatever the, whatever the criteria is. I, I think the town's going to want to see what criteria was used to pick these these um, these options. Well, in, in terms of the other capital projects that are on the table for this year, the Capital Improvements Committee has done that kind of scoring. So I think that they can be considered by us because we do have a, a ranking coming out of that committee. And are all of the options that are being considered by your committee options that were also vetted through? Well, the, the problem is that the uh, ARPA money committee hasn't met in over a month now. Mm. Finding a date for it to meet has proven very difficult. Mm. And the, that, that's a big part of the problem yeah. we're having. Is, yeah. is what what do we as a select board just take onto our own plates and say, okay, we're going ahead with this. Right. And what do we what do we throw back to that committee? 
which well, has well, let, let, yeah could i ask this if we decided this is important enough to go through with and we approve it we've just taken 20 percent of the budget away from this committee would that light a fire under people would we i mean is that a good way to light a fire under people to get them to actually meet and 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 go i mean i, I don't really know. I'm, I'm just asking because i don't know I, um, my, I just, my I, thought would be to take the smaller recommendation the the shed out of the hands and say go with the shed and, but throw the larger one back because i'd also want to see from the water department if they are look you know are in a position to contribute anything to that or they need mm -hmm. the entire 70,000 funded I guess I'm, I'm going to go back to the original thing. Why? Why? I don't want to light. I don't want to make take an action just simply for the purpose of lighting a fire because that could backfire and it could and it could be a, yeah. a detriment to. to yep. um, but what what's the rationale for saying yes to any one project right now as as opposed to the others? Because they're all important. They're all great projects. We can't possibly fund them all. The the why, reason why for they, doing it quickly is we're running up against the budget right and the, we may not be able to wait for that committee to meet before we have to make budget determinations of where capital projects are being paid well i i, I guess i i I'll, I'll i'll fall on my sword if i'm going to make decisions i want to make decisions based upon a side by side um, I don't. I don't want to make a decision when this is front and center. It, it, it's sort of like deciding to go clothes shopping for the one kid who happens to be in your living room at the time because the other two are already asleep. I, I just can't. I, I'm not comfortable with making that decision like like right. that. On the other hand, this one is important enough to whoever is is suggesting it that they think this needs attention now. Yeah, but they and, and 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 it it could be. I don't know. I haven't seen or heard from anybody else. Well, the, so I, of, I, the, it the seems other... to me we we need to get this committee to give us some recommendations and let's give them a deadline because we got to spend this money soon before it gets taken away. Because I could just I could see that happening. Anybody who hasn't spent their money by some date that nobody can make <laughs> is going to lose Brian, it. the date on that is twenty twenty four. It's like June the end of 24. Yeah, it's I think it's yeah. December 31st, 2024. Okay. Yeah, pending who gets elected and which election where, right? Those things can change. So I don't think we necessarily have to be overly zealous about doing it, but I know the finance committee is trying to figure out what capital projects they're gonna fund, and that's gonna be happening in a few months. So I guess we need a little we need. I think we need to light a fire under somebody and it might not be by approving money, but we need to, maybe we need to set a date, but we, we need to do something. Um, and if they were not willing to do the work, then maybe, you know, we get the written documents and we have to make the decision. I agree with that choice. I, I yeah. think within, you know, yeah, whether it's the next, <coughs> whether it's the next meeting or the, or the, or the weekend or the weekend, got the meeting following that, um, you know, let, let's say it's the first meeting in, in April. If you don't have it in front of us, we will take it upon ourselves to make the decisions and those decisions will be made based upon the information we have in front of us, as opposed to the information we don't have in front of us. Hmm. What's a reasonable deadline, Brian? I'm looking at my, my calendar here and I'm thinking about the budget planning process. And I mean, so we have a budget meeting March 15th and we have a budget meeting the 29th. Um, I mean, I, I think the hope was is that we would be wrapping, you know, wrapping up that process and, and knowing the budget and, and voting on how we're going to fund capital projects um you know by mid april um i mean we have um, a little bit more time because 
we've moved back the annual town meeting to the 24th. So mm -hmm. ideally we'd be asking the select board to sign the annual town meeting warrant on May 11th. Um, that's really when it gets set in stone, right? Um, right. Is when is oh, when the yeah. board signs a warrant. But we well, need to give meeting, finance yeah, some time to. Is, right, yeah. Our first meeting in April is the 13th. Is that too late, do you think? Because our last meeting in March is the 23rd. And then I think there's three no, weeks 30, until that 30. meeting in April. 30th, Joyce, I think, isn't it? Oh, I'm looking on my calendar. My, my, maybe my calendar is not up to date. I mean, March uh, it says, have... Yeah, mine still says the 23rd and that the Finance Committee meets the 29th and we weren't meeting the same weekend as they were, but maybe my calendar is out of date. So March guess... 30th, if that's it. Um, so you're saying we're not meeting on March 30th? I'm saying my calendar could be out of date. <laughs> so according to my calendar, we're meeting on the 30th. Yeah, me too. We've got a special town meeting scheduled for the 23rd now. Right. Oh, maybe that's what I'm confusing them with. No, I just I just like say yes to all the Google invites I get from Amy. I don't have a Google invite yet for the 30th. So that secret meeting on the 30th, I'm not going to be there. I don't get any Google invites from Amy. Oh. Uh, I'm hurt. Or I miss it. I don't know. Or maybe Google doesn't like my outlook. Maybe. All right. Well, I'm changing oh. that to the 30th then. Yeah. So I, I would like to do it on the 13th, but but I could be talked into doing it on the on the 30th. Going once. Going twice. Brian, Brian, what, Brian what do you think the odds are of getting a meeting? I know. Or e even more so, probably two meetings for this I, committee. I'm checking, I'm checking the doodle poll right now to see which dates I had. Because it'll probably take two meetings, one to get the proposals in and another to vote them out. It, it, it. There's no way we could get March 30th or two meetings with this group. I don't think we're could lucky we ask to them for something preliminary for the 30th. And then so that something happens before the 30th and we're not in this same situation where where people would, oh, we haven't been able to meet. Can we have some kind of preliminary um, indication of progress? Goals by I, Good. I think they'll have one meeting by March 30th and we can, I think that's a good idea. I think when you talk about sort of lighting a fire, I think March 30th is more of a fire than April 13th. It's a little bit hotter of a fire, right? Right. But, um, but, but we, but we're asking for less. We're asking for some kind of report on, uh, on, on what they're thinking is. And if, if at that point they say, it's unambiguous, we've got these two projects that everybody thinks should go through, then maybe we can get moving on that um, and, yeah. uh, and let the remainder of the details. I mean, I don't know what they're going to decide, but it might be that their preliminary meeting will have some result that's, that's something we can actually move on. And I would like to, rather than just the list of here's what we think we should do, a why we think we should do it. Let's do an iteration. And if there's a, if we see a trend and, and we, and we support the trend line, then, then we can, then, then we can move. And if not, we can say, can you guys get us a little bit more information by the 13th and then on the 13th, with whatever information we have in front of us from the committee or that we've dug up on our own, we make the decision. Well, I, I, I think that the committee should be able to at least give some kind of feeling about these projects and the, the capital improvement committee projects, because those have all got at least document, you know, paperwork sent in with them as far as why. Um, 
you know, there may be a request for other projects, I don't know, but at least those projects should, should be able to make some sort of recommendation on in one meeting, I would hope. Okay. And we'll include these water department projects in that discussion with the, with the committee. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we good on that? Yep. Um, APR co holder documents for the Ashman property. Yep. So these are what they say they are. This is for the Ashman APR. It's on Long Plain Road. I think it's 22 acres, somewhere between 20 and 30 acres the APR. Uh, these funds were approved at annual town meeting. Um, this is just the paperwork to. to execute those it's pretty much administrative uh it's just administrative paperwork essentially but it requires the signature of the select board chair move we approve the apr documents i'll second that all those in favor fred yes joyce yes me yes all right we're on to new business uh Recommendations for coal and wage adjustments for within the police chief agreement, employment agreement uh, that was designed by the personnel committee for the upcoming fiscal year. What do we got, Brian? Um, so in your packet, there was a memo and Keith is the personnel committee representative for uh, employees. And I guess he's the chair. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Joyce is the select board representative. Um, and there's a finance committee representative, Tom Mahar, and two at large, right? Uh, Susan Barron and Liz Betty Orlowski. Um, so every year, the personnel committee um, does uh, three, let's say three main tasks, right? That they, that they, re that they do. Um, every year. One is it accepts and looks at um, requests that are submitted for changes in positions, um, whether that's changes in number of hours, changes in, in, in wages, or changes in position descriptions. Uh, the next one is the, the personnel committee always does um, an annual salary, salary review based on um, 10 comparable towns that the personnel committee has identified. And I think it's been doing that for, with these towns, probably for about five, five years, maybe four or five years um, for to, um, to try to uh, bring in some type of consistency um, in this, uh, in how we compare and look at our wages. Um, and it also um, reviews information and makes recommendations on cost of living adjustments. So the personnel committee is, is advisory to the select board and advisory to the finance committee. So any recommendations that it makes would need to be accepted by um, it needs to be accepted by the, the, the select board uh, first and foremost. Um, and also um, the finance, there's financial implications to those as well, um, which need to be discussed with the finance committee. But um, I thought it would be good for the select board to discuss these um, first before the, the joint meeting. Um, so in the memo, I've highlighted recommendations that are, are recommendations that were made. Um, there's uh, two other items here that the personnel committee is seeking additional information about. Um, and one of those is a proposed recreation director coordinator position. And the other one was the, the traffic control officer position that, um, that I think uh, that the committee talked about as well. Um, but those, those will be discussed at a, at a future personnel committee meeting. But for tonight, um, let's talk about the recommendations that the personnel committee has made. Um, so there was a quest for the town clerk position to, to uh, be increased from, do you want to do these one by one or do we want to talk about them all? Probably one by one, right? One by one. One by okay. one. Um, there's a request from the town clerk to increase the number of hours. Um, currently it's 22 hours per week, a uh, request to expand that to 28 hours per week. Um, and the personnel committee unanimous, unanimously recommends the town clerk, uh, 
So when we talk about 22 hours, we talk about 22 hours of compensation, right? Um, like most people, I think the town clerk does extra hours and puts in the hours that it needs to get the job done, which I think varies a lot, but somebody's talked about this way, <clears throat> way more informed than I can. Um, so it recommends that the town clerk be compensated for 20, 28 hours per week. This would result in an approximate $8,500 increase to the town clerk budget. Are there questions uh, about that? I'm sorry, what's up? I was just asking if there was any conversation. Oh, sorry. Not uh, for me. Go ahead, Fred. No, no, I'm fine with it. I, yeah, I mean, my only, my only comment in in a silo, I'm fine with it. I, I think that we've all seen that um, the budgets this year are going to raise some eyebrows, and I think we all need to be prepared for that conversation because I don't think it's going to be a fun conversation necessarily because a, there are a lot of increases being requested. And I am very worried that the request will be a thumbs up and thumbs down based upon popularity as opposed to need. Um, and I'm not saying that from this group necessarily, I'm just saying this across the board, people are going to say, have an opinion about the, the the budget increases based upon who they know and 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 that type of thing as opposed to you know a, an ROI for that for 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 that request. So we we really need to understand that there are going to be some people who are not happy with these budgets. And, and I'm and I'm not comfortable and I'm not going to be comfortable if people start making the decisions based upon who they know, as opposed to what the impact on the town is going to be with 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 X, Y or Z request. I'm not sure that gives you guys any help with that, but it's going to happen and and and, and you know and and, I, and i'm not facing re-election so i can say these things um but it's going to happen but i but i, I still think we have to do our jobs yeah and they, on, and on this one i mean we are in in my opinion you know lucky to have the dedicated employees that we do have i think this is a really reasonable request and for maintaining, you know, maintaining what we need to do within the law, this is completely reasonable. You know, I, mean, I think in a way, if we didn't um, approve this, it would be kind of derelict in our duty to making sure our employees have what they need to keep our town um, operating legally and 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 doing what we ought to do, so I I, I have no problem with, with with this particular one, and probably not with any of the others. Right. But and and sort of Joyce, that's sort of my no. point that I don't have yeah. a problem either. But if by saying yes to all of them, we run the risk of the town voting no to all of them. Well, then that that's a risk. Yeah. They can vote me out of office. Then that's fine. Then <laughs> Right, I, I get well, that. We, we just have to go and defend them. Then that's all. But, right, yeah, we, we have to. We, we have to be clear and 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 honestly, my uh, what I have found is when people in Waitley get clear information and explanation about why we make the decisions we do, people understand and are supportive. Not a hundred percent, but certainly a majority. So that's our job, right? Let's do it. Okay. Motion to accept this proposal. Uh, second. Uh, all those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Me, yep. 
Next one, Brian. All right, next one is recommendation from the personnel committee, um, highway department um, wage increases. Um, the personnel committee unanimously recommends with one abstention that the following wage rates be increased. Part-time operator currently at $16 to 22, uh, $22 per hour. One to three year operator laborer, 2095 to 2250. And three year operator laborer, 2165 to 2325 per hour. Why is the part-time operator getting such a, 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 a much larger percentage increase than the other two? I think part of the reason was they're so much closer to minimum wage and we can't get people to work for that. We can't get people to do yeah. the work of a part-time operator for those wages. Uh, a, 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 if I remember correctly from the meeting, um, so part-time operator would be a CDL licensed um, truck driver. And typically we need those people when um, typically at the most inconvenient times, which is essentially during snowstorms um, to come out and plow. So um, I think there was concern about um, getting pe getting uh, people to come out during those time uh, during those times for only essentially minimum wage. And, and there's no there's no concern about the lack of separation between the part time operator and the one to three year operator. Um, I, I mentioned that at the personnel committee meeting and uh, Keith didn't seem to have an issue. Okay. Thank you. Discussion or motion? I, I, I think we need to remain competitive with other places, whether public or private sector, that would be have a call for these people. Well, we're never going to remain competitive with the private sector necessarily. Well, with the public sector, yeah. So we're, no, no, well, competitive with the private sector across when you go across the board because the, the wages will be lower, but there are other yeah. Yeah. advantages. Yeah. So I, I would then, I guess, to be really clear, move that we go, uh, agree with because I guess it's still recommended. Uh, for us, it's a recommendation to the Finance Committee, I guess. Yeah, we, we recommend going with what the Personnel Committee has proposed here. I will report. second that. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Next, Brian? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm going to skip the one uh, for Jim, if that's okay, and then we'll just do these other ones, and then we'll come back. Does that sound all right? And I'm going to skip seven as well, because um, I Jim's might be a longer conversation. Um, number eight here, personnel committee uh, noted. Uh, personnel com committee unanimously recommends that the part-time police officer wage rate be increased from 1960 per hour to twenty dollars and fifty cents an hour. And just to be clear, these are these were findings of the annual salary and wage report that the personnel committee does of ten comparable towns. Um, the other ones were requests that were made, excuse me, independently of the salary review. So this was this the wage for the part-time police officer was four point, essentially four point six percent below the median for the ten comparable towns of the same position. Okay, I'm fine with that. And we. Accept the recommendation on the part-time police officer wage. I'll second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay. What's the next one, Brian, you want to take up? Um, number nine. Um, so the personnel committee uh, recommends with one abstention that the highway and building superintendent salary, salary be raised to an amount equal to 8% over the median salary of the highway superintendents from the 10 comparable towns. What the personnel committee has been struggling with um, since we added responsibilities to keep uh, the building superintendent job responsibilities um, to Keith's job is that um, our comparison towns are strictly highway superintendents. So 
um, and and Keith was 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 compensated for that when when the change was made, there was a salary increase. But um, what the committee is struggling with is that each year um, Keith would look um, overpaid essentially for for I don't a period of years um, compared to his uh, other highway superintendents because he's getting because he has additional responsibilities. So they were trying to figure out a way to uh, make sure that the highway superintendent position is um, compensated for those uh, building superintendent duties. Did I say that right, Joyce? And this is what the recommendation yeah. was. Yeah, no, we, we, we kind of decided that 8% was the right amount over and above what a highway superintendent does to encompass the extra duties that he has as building superintendent. And again, that came about by looking back on what the bump was at the time and just kind of trying to make that bump be a constant in percentage terms rather than in absolute terms. Yeah, I, I, have, I have no problem with the 8%. I, I, as I think everyone here knows, I can't stand the town comparisons because they're by definition inflationary. And just by definition, it, it results in in, in inflation, um, because every time somebody bumps up to meet the mean, it means the mean changes. Um, and yet, but, public employees are not being overpaid. I, I get well, but your my point is still a valid one that that it, it is inflationary. Um, right. But we only do this once a year, so that puts the brakes on how much that how much that goes. It doesn't get out of control, I don't think. Well, I, I and. I, um, but I, but again, Keith does more than a highway superintendent does. So I, I have no problem with that comparison. Yeah. I will move. We accept the recommendation of the personnel committee. No, I'll second that. This All is on those, number nine, right? On yeah. number nine. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me? Yep. What um time? so the next one was the cola cost of living adjustment um the personnel committee recommends a 3.75 percent cost of living adjustment um for employees it was a four to one vote um the committee looks at things like uh consumer price index for the various regions that our region is included in um like new england new england region and the northeast region and then uh one that's closer, but maybe not a great comparison is, is essentially, what is it, Boston, Nashua, and some other region. I forget what, what uh, yeah. the title is. Um, looked at social security increase, and it, we also looked at what other communities were considering. Um, and the personnel committee, it's what they came up with, was a 3.75% cost of living adjustment. That various information about CPI is included in the packet. Um, and asked included an email about what other communities were considering. Um, the CPI was somewhere, uh, consumer price index was somewhere between, I think, six and seven um, percent uh, for the 12 month period. Um, a, a lot of other towns seem to still be somewhere in the um, two to three range in terms of what they were considering for COLAs. And um, Social Security was, I'd have to look it up, but I think it was six mm. point, it was in the six range, I think. Um, so that's the recommendation from the personnel committee. I mean, in, in, it's no secret that inflation is pretty bad these days. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to get any better over the next six months, that's for certain. Yep. So, thoughts? I think that this looks to be a 3.75 looks to be a fair sort of compromise number between uh, what some of the other towns seem to have provided and what 
the actual cost of living increase is. Right. Yeah, I, I think it was a compromise for sure. Um, and it's, I mean, we're all cognizant of we've got a two and a half percent limit on what we can do without an override. And we were a lot more comfortable going to something like 375 than we were going to six. Um, there were some agencies that were just like, oh, let's give ourselves a 6% raise. And there were groups that were not particularly necessarily held accountable for what the, what the salary increases were. And I won't mention names, but they know who they are. We are, we are much more held accountable for what we offer in raises. But at the same time, we know 2% is not going to cut it. Um, so we're kind of stuck in between. So we said, well, let's do, let's do something. And, and I'm thinking there was some, one of the numbers in one of those charts was around three and a half and four. So that's where we got the 375 from. And I think it was in one of the CPI documents um, where we kind of came up with that, that's something we think we can do it without having to do an override. And we want our employees to not be, you know, held back um, in, in this, you know, if their wages are gonna be worth less and less due to inflation, then we want to, to do as, as the best that we can with our restrictions to, to, to do, you know, do the best we can. I'm, I'm fine with it. Motion, do I hear one? Move to accept the 3.75% cost of living adjustment for employees. I'll second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Me, yep. Okay. All right, so number seven, we'll talk about, um, it's an agenda item after this. Um, so let's go to, let's go to, uh, the police chief, um, who's here. Um, so the personnel committee noted that the police chief salary is shown 3.8% lower than the median salary for the 10 comparable towns, um, and suggested that the police chief have a discussion with the select board, um, as there's an existing employment agreement, uh, with the select board. So yep. here we are. When's the contract up? The next, next fiscal year is the last year of the contract. So you would be negotiating sometime mm -hmm. July 1st, right? Right. The, the, the compensation language of the contract refers to, it has language that talks about um, I thought I had it listed here somewhere. Um, talk about um, changes to compensation in the contract consistent with all other non-union personnel. Is that, did I read that right, Jim? Something reviewed like that. By the, yeah, as re after review by the personnel committee and the select board. So I think essentially the, the finance committee looked at it and said the salary is set by the select board. So it should be the select board's decision whether or not they make any adjustments as opposed to them um, making any recommendations for adjustments. Yeah, I think the, the idea was that personnel committee gathers this data and makes a note when things are out of whack by more than a percent or two. And here's one where they brought it to our attention that's out of whack by not quite 4%. Yeah, 323, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, so. Um, so now it's it, the since the decision making power is in our hands, this personnel committee said, "Well, we, you know, we let's bring this to your attention and and let you run with it, or uh, let us run with it." I guess. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Anybody. Uh, uh, along the lines of what we've been talking about before, I think we have to be in line with what the market will be, you know, paying in other places now. Yes, that might be inflationary, but it's also reality for attracting people to work. If we're too far mm -hmm. under, 
we're not going to get better people. My only question is why wasn't why wouldn't this have been anticipated when the contract was signed originally? When this contract was signed originally, we bumped it up so that he was at the median. Right. So I guess my point is <laughs> that no? if we're going to do this, that's fine. But to avoid these conversations in the future, why on earth are we shooting for the median? It just seems like every time we go to the median, it takes the easy way out. Don't let other towns drive what we choose to pay our employees. Pay our employees what we think that they deserve. So, so when and when when you know if if it means that we are going to anticipate that things are going to go up in in the course of a three year contract, and and that means we're a point over the average, then then so be it. But it's it's for me it's incredibly frustrating to to have us. say whoops we didn't anticipate the contract the the salaries being what you know let's just but we we, we can't predict the future any better than anybody else that's why we keep looking at data but, no but 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 then no, contracts I, are I don't used think we need to avoid this conversation in the future either i think it's a very healthy conversation to have but then but then why have a contract well that because it gets reviewed you know, but, but you understand what I'm saying. I mean, it, 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 it makes the contract completely meaningless. I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I wouldn't agree with that either, but. Well, it makes the numbers in the, the contract. Team. The contract allows for this type of review and it doesn't have to wait for three years to have this review. And then, you know, year one, I'm 3% low and then year two, I'm 2% low and year three, I'm 3% low. And then we're looking at an 8% increase just to get back to the median. So these adjustments can be made throughout the year. This isn't, this isn't asking for anything above that. Like the last time we did contract was we discussed things that I've done and hadn't gotten raised in 11 or 12 years. So we, we made some adjustments in the, in the contract, but that, that wasn't because of this salary study or any salary study in the past, we've made changes based on the salary study outside of a, a contract hearing. <clears throat> so that's that's all I was looking for, was just yeah. to stay consistent with what we've done in the past. I mean, I, I don't think we have a perfect way of looking into the future and knowing what is gonna happen next year. So we but, do the what? best we can and try to be fair to our employees and. I, I don't think this is an unreasonable ask. No, I'm not saying it's an unreasonable ask at, at all. What I'm saying is, then why don't we just have a policy that every year all of our employees are just going to be bumped to what the the comparable towns are and call it a day? Because that's what we're in fact doing. Well, because then we can. Will we have some flexibility then? Don't we? And 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 because we don't always have good comps. And that's something the personnel committee takes into account as well. Probably for a police chief, we have relatively good comparable positions to look at. Um, there are some positions where we're like other, like no other town has that position or only two other towns have that position. Oh, but it's special because they're also doing these three other jobs. You know, so it, it's, a, it's a difficult job to compare. That's why we give it to the personnel committee and this is what they're they're bringing to us. And, and I'm just saying it's 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 why I, I I don't like the comparison. I think Jim deserves the money, and that's not the issue. But oh, well, should, then let's vote on this. And if that's not an we, issue, we we should be doing this on an, on just set the town policy that 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 our 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 people are going to get paid whatever the average is, and and that's the way it goes. No, okay. I think that we're what we're saying is when. Our people get sufficiently below the the average to make it uh, worth looking at. We will look at it, but I don't. But but sufficiently below the average happened awfully quickly. Is my point, and and so we should anticipate. Yeah. It. Anyway, let's just get a motion. But it, it didn't happen for all the positions that we looked at. It looked it, it it didn't even happen for most of them. It happened for a couple of them, and they're brought to our attention. Then it happens to be police chief, and that's in our lap because that's a, a contract between the select board. So I, 
I, I, I don't see any point in beating this any further. I would move that we um, support the 3.8% uh, bump for the police chief to bring him up to the medium for our com comparable tenancy. I would second. All those in favor? Uh, roll call me, baby. Uh, Joyce. <laughs> Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Thank you. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I missed anything here. Right. So we can, yeah. it's gonna bring us to the next agenda item. Okay. Uh, the next agenda item would be a discussion of the future of the Whitley Fire Department. So I was hoping to have Keith here. Um, so I think we can, I'll just, I'll just summarize uh, the concern and then, then this will be another, uh, another discussion at a different meeting. Um, so next, the, the summer of 2023, our fire chief will reach mandatory retirement age, um, which means that um, we'll either need to find a new fire chief or under the same terms and conditions or find a fire chief under different terms and conditions. Um, so I don't know what the future of the fire department should be. Um, I don't know what to, and not that I would know that, but um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that there's that big change that's going to happen in the summer of 2023, um, which means that anything that will happen will happen um, really at the end of fiscal year 23, which means that any changes will be implemented in fiscal year 24 for the, for the, you know, for that first year of whatever the future is. Um, in budget planning for fiscal year 2024, which I'm going to have an anxiety attack, is going to be 10 months from now. Um, that's when it's going to start. So um, if there's going to be studies done, if there's going to be discussions had, 10 months is not, is not a, a, a long time in terms of municipal time. Um, so we really need to have a discussion around the general question of, of what does the Whitley Fire Department look like moving forward? Um, the answer could be it's the same. The answer is going to be different. The answer is the answer could be we're going to explore regionalization. Um, I, I don't know, um, but there's that issue coming up. Uh, I'll 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 jump in. Um, Skims is the one of the best things that's happened to this town in terms of emergency response in years. Um, we already do the equivalent of, um, of, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, of in, in fire, we, you know, you, somebody has a fire in five towns. Mutual aid. Mutual aid, thank you, Joyce. Um, I, I think that this is the opportunity to have immediate conversations with whatever towns wanna join us. Obviously, Deerfield and Sunderland come to mind because of scams, but it could also include Hatfield, it could include Conway, whichever ones, again, ge geography, et cetera, need to come into play. But why on earth wouldn't we take advantage of this to say we should at least explore doing what we did with scams? I completely agree. I think that long term, that is the the direction we should be looking at first and foremost and there may be reasons why it doesn't happen but we should at least look at it well we've got this you know a major consideration with the chief in the immediate future and we've got a very large investment in a new piece of a, a new truck that was on the capital uh, calendar for not too far down the road in you know well into six figures and I think before we get into that kind of investment we should explore all of our options yep because that that that, that truck that's on the capital equipment or the capital plan right now that same truck truck exists in every single one of the other towns that we would be talking about as do pumpers as do everything else and 
and the capital equipment costs are, are absolutely not sustainable. So I, I, I feel like we need, obviously we need other people at the table for these discussions. Um, what's the, obviously a regular select board meeting is probably not the best place to start having these discussions. Um, unless we want meetings until like nine o'clock. Um, yeah, what's I don't know if it's forward. I think we should, it, I think, I think we are well within our abilities to invite towns from adjacent communities. Again, I, I, I named the, 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 the four in addition to Whitley that I, that I, that I thought made sense. Um, yeah and say hey we want to talk about we want to we want to begin a conversation around the regionalization of fire who wants to at least come and have a conversation with us and we can and we can host the meeting we can buy donuts no and, i mean and, I, I guess go ahead go ahead Joyce. i was gonna say i mean to if if regional if there's interest in regionalization that's likely to take more than 10 months so we should also be prepared to have something interim because how long did it take us to regionalize stems? It took, um, I think at least three years uh, to do the studies and have the meetings and get the buy-in and, right. and so on and be able to put that proposal before towns and have towns be ready to accept it. Uh, as a better option. So um, uh, while I think is it, I agree that this is the prime time to start talking about it, we do need a plan B because as, even if regionalization is the way to go, it's not gonna happen in 10 months. So, valid point. Um, okay. so I, I, I would absolutely be in favor of uh, starting approaching folks. I don't know who should do the approaching would that be the three of us? Um, I, I'm certainly open to suggestions on that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Plan, a, a plan B for something that might just hold us over be, before something can be regionalized would probably be prudent. Well, I, I, I know that I've got a, I don't know that I can make it, but I've got a SCEMS board meeting tomorrow. I could mm -hmm. float a trial balloon. Hey, do you guys want to? talk anybody want yeah i think that'd be a great place to stop i wouldn't want to leave out hatfield or conway because i think you're uh you're right that those are the, the ones that make the most geographic sense i mean especially hatfield right yeah now yeah. And, and again yeah i'm not saying that to yeah, you weren't I, I know you weren't trying to be exclusive yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I, I, I go ahead Fred. i think we should authorize brian to feel out the other you know administrators or fire chiefs in the other communities, you know, including Hatfield and Conway. Because also in talking about the chief's position, which I agree, Joyce, will not be settled in 10 months, we need to have, I think, at least have an inkling of where, we, of whether a regionalized approach might work right. to know whether we're looking for a permanent replacement or interim replacement. Hey, Fred, the, the one thing I would, I agree with everything you just said, except I'm not sure I would go the, the route of the, the current chiefs. And I say that as the person who was pretty darn intimately involved in the, in the SCEMS mm -hmm. development. And if that had gone through the chiefs originally, it wouldn't have happened. It has to be the leadership of select boards. Otherwise- okay. That is fine though. I. I would speculate and it's pure speculation that with the success of scams that would sort of grease the skids for this form of re regionalization doing I, it the first time is much tougher i i couldn't agree more i i just think that it has to be the initiative of the select boards not at the exclusion of the chiefs obviously they need to be intimately involved but i think that the the catalyst needs to be the select boards that's fine and can I just add that that I, I mean I, there's 
there's people other than John who are who are intimately involved in the operation of the fire department that I think have a stake in in these discussions, um, especially mm -hmm. long term and short term in terms of 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 replacement, right? Um, and I think it would be good to have discussions with them, um, certainly about the fire chief position in, in the you know the future of the fire department and and what you know what their opinions are and what they see. Um, mm -hmm. So it, you know Keith was going to plan on attending and, and sort of talk to that, but he obviously mm -hmm. wasn't able to. So, um, so I think that that's an important part of it is to, is to listen to what they have to say. Um, oh, I, and I'm not I, sure I, what the what the mm -hmm. proper venue is to do that. I, I completely agree, and you know we we need more than just buy-in from the we need serious input from the fire department. But in terms of the chief position, I think we first need to have an idea of what the position is going to be in very broad terms. Are we looking for, you know, are we asking, we're looking to find someone who's going to be there for a year or 18 months, or are we looking for someone to take over indefinitely? I, I think mm -hmm. Joyce's point was was well taken earlier. We just don't yeah. know. We And we need to have contingencies. Right. But but I think it's it's still okay to be speaking with the other people who are intimately involved oh. at this point, even with the hey, we don't know if this is going to work out, but we're thinking this might be an opportunity, and right. and we you know we, and we, we want you in on the conversation. I think that's that doesn't counter. That's it's, not it's, counter. It's not even we that. want you in on the conversation. It's you have you, 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 we, you're we need, integral we part of the conversation. The conversation. They, they, but, but they have to be a part. And again, this is just based upon upon what what we went through. What a decade ago now, some whatever it was, yeah. probably a decade ago, um, was that they need to be a part of it. No one entity can say no. We're not doing it. That input's mm -hmm. important um, because I think even even with the even with the challenges we had from individual ambulance, and because of the challenges. That were posed to us by individual ambulance organizations in the three towns. At the end of the day, it made scams better. Now, there were and there were some people who wanted to maintain independence, as we all will remember. Um, mm -hmm. But even with that movement for independence, at the end of the day, it made scams better. And those people will end up being very strong advocates of scams and 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 to this day make it work better. Mm. So I'll throw the trial balloon, but then I think we we really should probably plan a a a a, uh, a convening somewhere. Yeah. Now, so is this something that um, I looking in the chat? Um, uh, you know, I think Jim put something in there that I was thinking in the back of my head, is this something where we want to have the whole select board there to talk with the folks involved? Or could this be something where the liaison with the fire department um, starts the conversation and then maybe figures out what the next steps are? Yeah, I, 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 that's fine. It, I mean, is this I, something where in some way FERCOG could facilitate? Well, they can't facilitate, Fred, but they they funded the study that happened with the ambulance between the three towns, and it was it was part of the DLTA. Mm -hmm. um, they don't fund the whole thing because it's in a, it's a it's not a cheap proposition, um, but they they certainly plant good seeds. Who's the liaison for the fire right now? Me. I think it's Fred. Yeah. Well, Fred, if you want, I mean, I'll I'll throw the trial balloon out. I'll let you know, and then, you know, you can you can take the ball and run with it. I'm certainly well, not the appropriate person to do it at this point. Well, that, as with anything, you a potentially long journey, and we have to start with a single step. Yeah. Okay. Uh all right, next on the uh, agenda is, if I can find it, and I can't find it. What's on the agenda, Brian? <clears throat> uh, to discuss a letter received 
requesting that the select board consider reestablishing a portion of Dickinson Hill Road. Okay. Which again, Keith was going to be here to discuss. Um, there's not necessarily a, a, a timeline, so we can push this to next meeting. It was a request from a resident that uh, a portion of Dickinson Hill Road that has been previously dis legally discontinued uh, yeah. be relayed out. Um, yeah, I, it, I don't feel comfortable taking this up without hearing yeah. from, from Keith. Yeah. Okay. So let's push that to the Okay. Following. Is my memory correct that it's now administrator uh, updates? Uh, we have one other thing that I revised the agenda with uh, to discuss and vote to approve proposals for engineering and building plans for the Hurley Park accessibility project. Um, you want to talk about that, Hannah? Yeah, of course. Um, so this is for the park grant. Uh, we've received two proposals for working on Hurley Heath Park. One is from Joe Maddy for the architectural plans to bump out the bathroom wall to make it more accessible. The other is from Terry Reynolds to um, do the rest of the work required at the park. Um, with the CPA funds we've received, we are well within budget. Um, we have the 15,000 to cover Terry Reynolds proposal. And then we have the 6,000 from the CPA to cover the architectural proposal. And that proposal is under $2,000. So um, we have some wiggle room there as well. Um, I'm happy to share my screen if you'd like to see the proposals. I think they're also in the select board packet. Um, and I'm just looking for a vote and approval to move forward with those proposals. Well, they're the only ones we got, so. <laughs> I move we, uh, we, we move forward. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yep. Yeah. All right. Now we're town administrator updates, your favorite part. Jonathan, you're gonna yeah. miss these. Well, I know, terribly. He's, he's gonna tune in. I was gonna say, you can tune in around 7.45 each Wednesday if you want. <laughs> if, if Amy sends me the uh, calendar invites, I'll try really hard to look at the calendar invites. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, reminder, a special town meeting March 23rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. Um, for a handful of CP articles, CPA articles and um, some repurposing of funds for the library improvement, uh, library accessibility improvements project. Um, since I will be, will, I will be remote, does that mean I am not allowed to vote? On March 23rd? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, and Jonathan, I had mentioned this to you about a recognition of extraordinary work at the South County Senior Center. Do you want me to draft up like, uh, um, for the fill-in? Accommodation, yeah. Like a, a accommodation or something and have the board sign that? Yeah. And then send it off? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Make it look nice, big blue, whatever. She's done a great job and she should yeah. be recognized for it. Uh, above and beyond, this was the, um, Pro, she's the program director, right? She's a pro, she's been a long time program director and she, um, and she has a limited number of hours and she really assumed the, uh, essentially the full-time director's role from like June to January. Um, it, it did a really good job holding everything together, especially during these times. Um, so, yeah. um, Haydenville road reconstruction project update. Um, this is accelerating quickly and we got to try to get out of the way so we don't get run over. Um, originally, this was slated for uh, construction in fiscal year 2025 for the Franklin TIP. Um, because of some delays in other projects uh, that were slated for TIP funding, the MPO is trying to um, see if, and MPO and Mass, Mass Dot are trying to see if we can uh, move this project up. Um, possibly for funding in FY20, for actual construction in FY24. Oh, darn. Um, wow. I, w I was kind of hoping that it would happen like in the next three months so I could get a hat and a shovel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the invite, okay? You can you can bring your own hat and shovel. <laughs> uh, see, I, I'm not going to the select board anymore. I don't get a free hat and shovel. Chimney crickets. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm getting one. <laughs> So what this means is that is that they're looking for us to accelerate right away acquisitions. Um, so 
Keith mm -hmm. and I were on a call with with Mass DOT right away today, along with the engineer, um, and they're asking us to start that process soon, um, like now. Um, mm -hmm. So that means um, uh, title work by legal counsel. It means uh, letters of intent to abutters um, who are impacted. It means that, um, and along with those letters of intent, there'll be, um, you know, the question of whether they want appraisal and compensation or certificate or if they um, offer a sign a certificate of donation. Um, there's a lot of parcels. There's probably somewhere in around 70 parcels. Luckily, a lot of those are city of Northampton. Um, mm. So the recommendation from Mass UT right away is that we enter into some type of agreement with the city of Northampton saying uh, that covers all those parcels. So we don't have to do 58 different letters of intent and 58 different appraisals. And, and, and the hope is, is that the city of Northampton will donate those. Um, well, but I, we obviously don't well, know. I think we need to have just a, a, a sort of a, I don't want to, I don't know whether I want to call it a working group or whatever I want to call it, but there are a lot of people as we heard in that, in that hearing that want to be heard. They want to be involved in, in, how how we move forward i'm not saying that and, and i don't think that there are many of them who don't want the project to go on but they want to be involved in an ongoing way in the discussion of how this moves forward and i think it's incumbent upon us to create that 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 system now so that they are heard and they feel like it wasn't thrust upon them last minute but they were part of the conversation in terms of implementation from from minute one so so I'm, uh, I guess I need clarification on, on, on who you're speaking about because what the next steps are is town, uh, town council will do, will do title searches of all the property that are, is supposed to be impacted um, so that we have the, the actual owners. And then those, then those letters of intent will go out to those property owners. And it, that's the point where those property owners will, you know, conversations will happen with the affected property owners. Um, if you were talking about people that reside within Waitley or without Waitley, um, I think a lot of the people that spoke that expressed concerns don't live in Waitley. Um, and I don't, uh, I guess I would be interested in, in the board's opinion as to, as to what interaction should happen with people within Waitley and without Waitley. I, I, I just know that I was contacted by people immediately after that hearing, and they are people who absolutely live in Whaley, and that they're and and that tree removal and and all this kind of stuff is going to change impact their not only their, for lack of a better term, quality of life, even though it's not a great term, but also the the the, the value of their property. You know, it just they want to be involved. Yeah, but I think those are people who are going to get notified. Right, you're not that, talking about people who don't live in Waitley and on that route. Right. No, I, I, right, and I understand that, Joyce. But, but notification and really setting up a, 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 a forum where there is ongoing, ongoing communication, not snapshot and time communication. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think we owe it to those residents. Well, I, I think Brian said that abutters will be appraised on everything that's going not not just the people who are getting uh whose property is going to be right but but Fred, i guess it's the it, and, and i don't think it's semantics appraised is one thing but involved in an ongoing way so that they are are feel part of the planning process that's different than a than a snapshot in time here this is what's going to happen um, give us your feedback now. I mean, let's make this a, a, a working group so that they can really feel like they were part of the process. It's, it, it's just good. It, it's good community involvement. So, so my understanding is that is that Keith has done some of that on a on a one to one basis. Um, okay. If it's if it's the same person or, or people who contacted you, I know Keith has also been in touch with them um, to talk about uh, potential changes. I just, the, the trees sound, that's what kind of 
mm. triggered my memory of that. And, and, um, and, and so, yeah, and, and that's fine, but we should be, we should be memorializing it and, and documenting it so that we can always go back and say, this is what this person wanted. Are we, are we truly paying attention to this to the extent possible? And, and, you know, cause we've all seen nightmares about how residents don't feel like that they were ever included until the, 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 the ink is dry. And let's avoid that. I mean, because they, because again, having their involvement, it doesn't stop the project. It makes it a better project. And again, if it's if Keith's doing it all himself, that's a lot of work for Keith. But what what do we do if 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 resident X says one thing and resident Y says something that's on the, on the polar opposite? We we've got to have communication here. Yeah. And, and it's not fair to put Keith in the, in the position of being the final arbiter, I don't think. So what do you think is an appropriate, an appropriate thing? You know, maybe, a, 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 again, I don't know how long the timeline for the whole project is, and I, maybe I should know, but I don't. Make a, a, a bi, set up a biweekly call for people who want to, hear updates, trade ideas, make sure that they understand what their neighbors are thinking. And it could be a five minute call or whatever, whatever length of time needs to be, but there should be a set process communication vehicle set up. Can we set up something through the website for you know, the equivalent of a bulletin board for progress and for comments? I like the sound of something like that in the sense that it i i don't want to like I, this is this project being brought up sooner in time rather than later is already going to be putting stress on the employees involved um and and kind of demanding more of them than we were expecting necessarily for that time period um the the main caveat is that not everybody will interface well with the world wide web so um, it would be really nice if there was like somebody who's really interested in, in that, like a, a person who's not already employed by the town, but who's um, uh, maybe one of the people who's in a butter or maybe a small group of them. Um, the people who are really interested, maybe kind of they can be the liaison between um, like what we've got to get done between Keith and then maybe help spread the information to other people, help that communication happen. Yeah, so we can encourage setting up a citizens committee for anyone who's affected and make that the point of contact rather than lots of different individuals. And that's fine. As long as, long as they truly are heard. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, that, that would then be re the responsibility of that committee that they're heard. Yeah, and then communicate with the town. I, but I, I think, it, but, but a, yeah, I, I just think it's important of an important function. What it looks like, I'm I'm open to ideas, but I just think that that function should exist, and 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 because of this expedition of everything, I think it should should if if it's this if if it's this neighborhood group, whatever you want to call it, then that should be set up sooner rather than later. And if no one volunteers to do it, well, then no one volunteers to do it, but we give them the option. Yeah. Okay. What else, Brian? Um, police station septic repairs. Um, that, um, so there were some issues with the septic system there, and it turns out through further investigation that I think the entire waste pipe from the building to the septic tank, which goes under the police station, needs to be replaced. Um, luckily, the insurance will cover, um, I think, everything except the actual cost of the new pipe. So um, it's just something that we're going to have to, um, it's just a procurement we're going to have to do to get a contractor in to do that. Um, and we'll, we'll start that at, as soon as possible. Um, does that sound about right, Jim? Yeah, last last I <clears throat> spoke with Keith, we had quotes from a plumber and a person to do the work and um, somebody to redo the floor. Um, but then 
finding out that you had to get two additional bids, so you got to start the whole bidding process to mm. to get that all going. So that's going to take some time, but yeah, it's going to be over 10k. So it, there's yeah. a, a certain bid and advertisement process that needs to happen. Um, but it's it's something that's that's in the works. Uh, I just wanted to let let the board know that. Um, Crystal Lane Culvert Design Project update. Um, Hannah was able to get us another chunk of money from the same uh, from uh, the same grant agency. It was a DER or something like that. Um, so we're now able to fully fund the um, final design of the the replacement of the Christian Lane Culvert uh, that's between Castaways and the fire station. Um, so that's great news. We'll have final plans. Speaking of, of things happening quickly, we'll have final plans for that by um, the end of June because that's when the money has to be spent by. Um, maybe they'll 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 finish them up by July. But um, so that'll be good that that will happen. Um, am I missing anything? I think that's that's about. Time bomb will finish that up. Yeah. Um, so um, different grants that that I should say update on grants awarded because um, that's what I what I meant to put there. We can also talk about submitted, but Hannah covers that pretty good. Uh, most meetings um, we have an outstanding complete streets grant to to, um, to complete the sidewalks um, that's currently being designed. So the the sidewalks on Chestnut Plain Road that's still in the design phase. Um, in some uh, traffic safety improvements in West Whaley and also extending the sidewalk at the elementary school. That's what the complete streets grant was for. Um, so I just wanted to keep that in our mind so that's that's going on. Um, floodplain bylaw revisions. So uh, if you recall two or three years ago, I think it was maybe closer to two, um, the federal government passed a requirement that that municipalities have to update their uh, flood insurance, uh, their, essentially their floodplain bylaws uh, to maintain eligibility for the flood insurance program. Um, and they had a pretty tight timeline on that, which they have since removed. But the planning board has been working pretty diligently with uh, Peggy Sloan from FERCOG, uh, working with Hannah and I, somebody else from the state on, on putting together a revised floodplain bylaw. So there'll be public information sessions um, at some point. I don't know if any of those have not been scheduled yet, right? Exact dates. Right. Yeah. I'm going to suggest March 28th, but we haven't decided on an official date yet. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, Brian, can I interject real quickly? I'm, I apologize, but I have to go to my eight o'clock meeting. Um, yep. And I do want to... Um, I'm done anyways. You are? You are. Yep. I want to figure out how to anoint Joyce as my um, official signatory over the next two weeks when things needing si signatures are timely. How do I do that? I think someone would make a motion for, for Joyce to sign the warrants. Um, I will make that motion. With, with and, and, and that's, that's no, no, uh, no uh, in, impact on you. It's just that she's the vice uh, chair. That, 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 nope. That, I'm making the motion to authorize Joyce for whatever chairman signatures are required in Jonathan's absence. I second it. All those in favor? Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me? Yep. Joyce, will you be around next Tuesday? Next Tuesday? Monday? No. Tuesday? No, I'm gone Monday through Thursday. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to make Fred. <laughs> Can you redo that motion? <laughs> That's when the next vendor warrants will come out would be next next uh oh. monday afternoon I, tuesday so I, I can't like email you my signature <laughs> i tried that I, right. I, yeah then then i would like to revise that motion and uh <laughs> um and move that fred baron be authorized to uh take care of anything next week that the chair should have to sign in a timely manner i'll second that all those in favor joyce hi fred yes me yes all right Thanks, you guys. Yep. Thank you. I, I got to go. Thank you. All right. Well, and I would move that we adjourn. Oh, Second. yeah. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.